Hello everyone and welcome to my nature diaries. I have found so many wildflowers this spring. So this is a part two of my last spread in my last video. And I'm going to just do this right hand side. You can see I've already gotten the left one done. I'm just going to put a little bit of a text box and we're going to journal a flower. I am using a reference photo that I took of this root anemone and it's basically a white flower with some delicate green leaves. I'm just going to basically start sketching it out. Using this photo is really such a great way to draw something from nature. If you're not in nature itself, that is. Again, the reason I like to use a reference photo is it gives me so many interesting perspectives and angles of the flowers. It's just a way to help it to look more realistic looking maybe. Even though this is an illustration, I do like the idea of using a photo as a guideline. I'm trying to focus on simple shapes and simplify the photo. Also, what I do is if I don't have enough flowers in the photo, I like to just take some of the petals and, and flower pictures again and, and repeat them in the drawing. I am using a new fountain pen with an extra fine point and it also has waterproof ink in this so I can watercolor later. I'm going to, contrary to my last video, I'm going to ink the sketch in first and then I'm going to paint over it and I wanted to show you that of course you can do it both ways you don't have to do one or the other whatever feels more comfortable to you sometimes this can feel a little more restrictive when I ink it first and before watercoloring but other times it helps me to stay a little bit more um, in touch with what I want to do for the actual painting so it's totally up to you how you would like to make your illustration but I would suggest trying different methods in different ways and then that way you kind of know what feels comfortable for you and that's just a tip is to sometimes go outside of what you're used to doing Usually it does stretch your art skills just a little bit more when you try different methods of inking. That's my number 12 Princeton Snap Brush. With it, I'm adding some water, fresh water, and then I'm going to add some sap green, mix a little bit with ultramarine blue in there coming up. But I want to just kind of uh, fill in some of the spots, the leaves. I'm just trying to leave those flowers white. And you can use masking fluid. I, I just didn't want to do it because of time but it's totally up to you on how you would like to color that in. Also, I am putting on just a coat of color along the side that you saw there. And now I'm going in some deeper uh, ultramarine blue and sap green, maybe a touch of raw umber. I, um, it's a dark brown for sure. And I'm gonna add that later on as well, but I'm going in and I'm just kind of uh, highlighting the flowers in front and there's that dark brown that I'm using and I'm just adding some warm tones to all these blue greens uh, to just again warm it up warm up the painting and composition because the flowers were in all these leaves uh, dead leaves because it's spring and I like the juxtaposition of the fresh green and blue colors with that brown um, warm tone and then just taking a brighter green, I'm going over and highlighting those stems or coloring them in. And I'm going to go ahead and use that same color here soon to just do the leaves. It's actually just kind of a springy green and I'm just brightening it up so it doesn't get lost in the background, of course. For the white petals of any flower, I like to use this silver metallic color from, this is Kuretake Starry Colors palette. It's totally up to you. I'm using artistic license here to add a little bit. It really, it's very, very subtle. So you can't tell unless you really are picking up the uh, nature journal and kind of giving it a bit of a tilt. But I really feel like it just adds a little bit more texture and interest to this flower illustration. The centers of these flowers do have a yellowish green um, center. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up the flowers by doing that. And I'm using a really fine tip brush just to add some real subtle and light color. And that pretty much takes care of this illustration. I'll go back and tweak a few things, but I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna add the lines for all my text. And the first paragraph is usually information about the, the hike and the second is usually about the flower itself. 
as I go ahead and fill in this section, I want to invite you, if you haven't subscribed already, I would really love to have you join along as I nature journal and I'm going to give you tips and thoughts and hopefully inspire you to nature journal as well. That's really one of my big goals is to, to just help you to be able to see and appreciate the beauty all around us. And please let me know, do you nature journal or maybe you always wanted a nature journal, but is there something that's holding you back from it? I would really appreciate hearing and would love to uh, be able to encourage you in any way that I can. A lot of times when I'm done with an entry, I go back, especially with something like this, when I ink in the beginning, which I did here, I like to go back and just outline the original uh, drawing and illustration, especially because the the one on the left hand side had a lot of thick lines and I, I kind of like that style. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that and you can see me just finishing that up here. I am so thankful that I was able to capture these three beautiful spring flowers. I hope you were able to get out there and at least be able to see them, photograph them and just enjoy them, of course, and the spring season. As always, thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, and commenting. Just remember that you are amazing and creative. And until next time, have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye.